Hey everybody, um, putting this uh, video together just for a uh, quick uh, crash course in motion. Uh, this would cover chapters one, two, and three. And uh, again, this is just a quick review. It'll kind of be up to you to go through uh, the PowerPoints, your notes, work old problems, that sort of thing. But at least this will uh, get you thinking about the right stuff. But uh, anyway, basically those chapters boil down to just these equations. Uh, this first one, remember, is just an average velocity. Uh, you could never use this for something that's accelerating or something like that, but, uh, but it does have some application. Um, these were kind of the meat of everything. These were the ones that allowed you to plug in accelerations and solve for things like how far something goes or how fast something ends up moving. Uh, and so these got used a lot. Um, actually got used a lot all year, but uh, chapter two, chapter three, uh, for sure. So review these. Remember that the AP folks use different notations than what I have here. Feel free to use whatever uh, you want. Like a lot of times they'll use an X for D, um, and then here they'll just use a V instead of VF, uh, that sort of thing. So anyway, that's the equations. Check those out for sure. Uh, graphs, we looked at motion graphs. We spent a lot of time on these. Um, these would be something I think they would hit on the test, at least a good chance. So review these. Um, some key things to remember is just kind of what look, basic plots look like on these graphs. So on distance versus time graph, to show something that's stationary, you've got horizontal line. To show something moving at a constant velocity, you've got a constant slope. And then to show acceleration, you've got to curve the line on that graph. Um, Remember, in terms of like velocity, showing velocity on this graph, the slope of the line, so the slope of this line is, is velocity. So I'll write that in, slope equals velocity. So you can find that pretty easily if they give you something like that. If you have to make one of these graphs, which sometimes you have to do on these tests, uh, make sure to label the axes. So, you know, write out distance, time, uh, put units, which I haven't done just because this is just a really quick uh, quick review, but uh, put units, all that kind of stuff, and then, of course, draw your plot. Um, you could put a, a dot anywhere on this curved line. So you could put a dot here, and you could draw a tangent line in. And if you found the, the, uh, the slope of that tangent line, you'd have the velocity, like an instantaneous velocity at that point. So keep that in mind, too. Uh, velocity versus time graph down here, same kind of thing. On this graph, if you want to show something that's stationary, it has to be down here. On, uh, on the x-axis, so that's stationary. Anything above that would be a constant velocity. And then to show acceleration, you have to have an increase in velocity as time goes on, so this guy here. Um, if you find the slope of this line, the slope of this line on this graph is acceleration, so keep that in mind. I'll write that over here. So P equals Excel, there we go. Um, so yeah, I think that takes care of graphing, but look over those. We did some other more complicated scenarios as well, but that gives you the, uh, the general idea anyway. All right, uh, last two topics were kind of chapter three topics. So we had vector addition stuff, uh, which basically just said if you have multiple vectors, they could be added together. Like if you had displacements, uh, or let's use, I guess, velocities. Like if you had something that was going 10 meters per second uh, east, and then like there's wind and the wind is blowing five meters per second to the east, then you could add these two together and the resulting velocity would be 15 meters per second east. That was kind of the most general things. Um, two dimensional vector addition is where it got a little more tricky. So if you had something that was going like to the east and then switched and went north, then we could find the resulting velocity or acceleration or displacement any vector by finding that guy right there. So this is where like Pythag came in uh, solving for this. We solved angles also. So a lot of times we were using tangent like to solve the angle here and then describe that. So just a triangle review for all of this, but uh, that was vector addition. And then the last major topic uh, of that chapter was projectiles. And so projectile motion uses, I'm going to slide this back in, these same equations basically. Uh, you just have to be careful in terms of what you plug in for your velocities uh, and what you're trying to solve. But if you're dealing with a projectile, then the thing's flying through the air, so you know all of the A's are going to be G's, right? So you're going to enter uh, 9.8 for the value here. Um, 
as you're going through and solving those. So keep in mind, it's still just the same equations, which makes it kind of nice, but the application's a little bit different. Um, the projectiles on an angle, especially, uh, were, were kind of tricky, but I, remember we kind of drew these, and so the horizontal projectiles look like this, and then these things all follow the path of a parabola on the way down, and then you have to be careful with the X and the Y components, and remember not to mix those. So if you're looking to solve for like how far the thing goes, then you have to use all X components. But if you're looking for like the height of the cliff or something like that, then you have to switch and use all the Y components. So that's kind of what made these tricky is you had to deal with um, both of the dimensions, but you have to separate them out into X and Y. So remember that. Um, other than that, you're plugging in uh, to your equation. So remember this guy for your horizontal stuff, and then any of the other three for the vertical stuff, because the vertical stuff, you have acceleration. So you have to use these guys for the vertical, for the Y stuff. For the X stuff, there's no acceleration, and so this is your equation for any of the X variables, like how far it goes, or its launch speed, like right here, you would use this equation also. All right, uh, if you haven't launched at an angle, you have a little bit of preliminary work to do first. So here's something launched at an angle and do, 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 another parabola. And same kind of thing here. You have some kind of a launch speed, let's say 15 meters per second. And before you can plug anything into those equations, you have to find the VX and the VY. So VX, VY, you have to find these two guys. Um, and that's just some simple trig. So you're gonna have some kind of an angle here and you'll just run cosine and sine. And once you get Vx and Vy, then those are the numbers that would get plugged in here. So like your Vx, you would plug into this equation. The Vy's, you could plug in anywhere here in terms of like the initial velocity. So remember, if you're looking for like the height of something, you would wanna plug in Vy. Vy is what's gonna determine how high something goes. Time is kind of the one exception. You could solve time here, uh, or you could solve time with the Y components. Uh, either way, depending on what kind of information you have, both of those can give you the time because the, t the time is the same for the X and the Y components. So anyway, hope this helps. Uh, let me know what kind of questions you guys have. And of course, uh, crunch some numbers, look through stuff. Happy studies. Hope everybody's doing well.